Hi, Rachel. Hi. Hi, Tavia. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to sit down with you guys today. We're going to be talking about This Is Where It Starts, a piece that you guys choreographed as a part of your company, Near and Far Projects. And we performed it on uh, the, at the Winchester Theatre as a part of New Blue Festival back in June, I think. So my first question for you guys is, what is the minimalistic approach and why did you guys choose it for this piece? Um, the minimalistic approach was an aesthetic choice. Uh, when I first created the piece early last winter, I started. Right, because you guys had yeah. a, a version of it for choreographic works yes, at, at Ryerson. Ryerson. Right, right. So yeah, it was an aesthetic choice. I really like the simplistic movement myself um, because I think there is a lot of power in that sort of unification. The costumes are also very gender neutral, which yeah. is something that I value and appreciate and want to see more of in the dance community. Definitely. I think because I think that's appropriate. I think we also went for like the minimalistic approach because we thought a lot could be read in that, like a lot, of, or there was a lot of interpretation that came with that. Um, right. Like giving something sort of like a blank slate that could be read in many different ways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So you guys didn't really want things to seem too complicated on stage or, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, like you said, with the costuming and even like, I noticed like the, the jump sequence towards the beginning of it is, you know, it, it's very frontal. It's very like on the, on the counts. So it has that kind of, um, that like proportion of just being in like a box it's, it's, yeah, it's simple very it's tidy and it's clean. tidy that's mm-hmm. a good word totally totally I think it's good like Rachel said for the audience to perceive it however they want mm-hmm. and if there is a preconceived narrative that's choreographically right. placed in there the audience can either utilize that or create their own right yeah so it's almost like as we were creating this piece we created with the audience in mind mm. if we gave something that was really busy then it would cause like a busy narrative or something more complicated but if you give something really basic and simple Mm -hmm. and minimalistic um, it allows for many different interpretations yeah I think there is complexity and simplicity too Mm -hmm. yeah it can definitely go both ways yeah Mm -hmm. cool and I mean the idea of not having um, a backtrack like a recording of music Mm -hmm. we you know we worked so much with sound and like what live sound can bring to the piece. I wonder if you could like speak to that a little bit. So the piece itself isn't put to any sort of score. I believe that the jumping sequences that we do represents a sort of heartbeat. Again, the unity in the jumping, so it makes like a little pounding heartbeat sound. Mm -hmm. Um, There is French language text in it as well, which can be, I guess, a score. And there's, in the remounted version, there's English. So again, we're keeping the audience in mind and having it accessible as possible. For me, like I thought, staying away from the music, like we didn't decide to add music into the remount. And I thought that would be a way to have the dancers listen to each other a little bit more. Mm. Because I'm really curious in how dancers sort of develop this own commu- their, their own communication on the stage and like, are really receptive to one another within the movement and without music you sort of heighten that sense mm-hmm. of listening to each other and feeling each other and developing your own timing yeah I just think that's really interesting without music it's how was it for you yeah I mean <laughs> it was definitely a challenge I think we worked so much on like staying together and especially because there's so much unison right? yes yeah so well you exactly really have to pay attention to what everybody else is doing yes. and there's really specific movements. Yeah, and like we talked about simplicity and complexity, like the con- it was so simple that it was so complex mm-hmm. to to make look good, to, you know, stay together and as a unit um, with the jumping sequence, you know, if if you mess up, like you're, you're gone. <laughs> yeah, so that's you're it. gone, right? Like cuz it's so like precise and and I think that was a good challenge for all of us and definitely being able to use my voice, like not just my body, was really cool. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I really want to talk about why the shoes came off. 
halfway through. I'm, I'm like very curious about like what you guys can say to that. Uh, for me, it was sort of a symbol of like a landmark of moving from one point to the next. It was a very like transitional process for the dancers of changing from one state to the next. Mm -hmm. And my interpretation of that is probably really different from Tavia's because we interpret the piece really differently, Mm -hmm. actually. Um, Yeah, so for me, it's just about the transition of one state to the next and shedding one part of you and moving on to the next. But I don't know if that's different for you or not. Um, I think the taking off of the shoes strips everyone's individuality again. Yes, so mentioned. also the shoes, like the in the costuming, everyone's in a very uniform, gender-neutral gender costume, mm-hmm. but everybody's shoes are different and mm-hmm. very colorful, so they're supposed to represent a sort of identity right. and the individuality within the people. So, mm-hmm. When we originally started the piece, I talked about it being a representation of the seasons, so in the beginning we always talk about like we're hoping for spring to come again or like we're wanting for like the sunshine because this is sort of like the winter Mm -hmm. we're always hoping for the newness so we're planting the seed and planting the seed and then when we take off the shoes we sort of like immerse ourselves into the ground and the Mm -hmm. soil yeah and then the movement starts to change as well it's more full and I think more embodied and we're using our facial expressions more. So we're really like calling out to the universe like this is what I want, this right. is what I want. Whereas when the shoes are on, it's sort of like a barrier between you yeah. and the earth. Like, mm-hmm. 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 And then as soon as they come off, there's a, a transition or a shift in, in movement. As you said, you start to use your facial expressions. and. No, yeah, I, I think that's interesting. I guess I didn't really think about it, actually, as I was performing, because, like, like you said, the movement gets bigger once the shoes are off. Like, there's a barrier that's been broken. There's, you know, something that now we can connect to rather than, like... And then, I, you know, at the end, when I pick up them up, like, there's that kind yeah. of... I don't know, there's kind of, like, we're, like, able to hold them and be, like... Like, what does these, what do these represent? Like, yeah, what do and, these do for and us? If, like, how for me, it's the state of individuality, and you're literally carrying a piece of every person off the stage mm-hmm. in just one big clump, you know? And it's like, it's such an objectified mm-hmm. thing. Like, you're just picking them up and taking them off stage. Um, I don't know. It's really, it's interesting. Could be interpreted to me. Yeah, different ways. Yeah, yeah, totally. Really cool. Really cool. I was thinking about this after we finished performing it in a theater with an audience quite close to us. Um, but I thought it would be kind of funny if we did it in a basketball court. Mm, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and like the costumes and the running shoes. Yeah, that could be an interesting setting for a film. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We've talked about remounting it, but never have we decided on like an alternative setting to a stage. I yeah. Guess. Like we've mentioned just in passing of doing it in a site-specific work, but then we thought if we're going for this minimalistic approach and we put it in a very busy space that will mm-hmm. sort of take away from it and the whole point of it is being intimate and that you could hear the dancers speaking and humming and you know and if you put it in a big open space will that be really taken away I think it'll totally change the audience's perspective as well because on a proscenium stage we have this like raw blank canvas that we're showing them and I feel like if we put it in an already existing space where we can't like do things like manipulate the technical aspects of it or like the audience's like intimacy and depth it like gives another narrative that I don't think exists with this piece if that makes sense totally valid I mean that makes yeah. I mean if you have like that feeling you feel like you were able to accomplish it it could potentially work in mm-hmm. a basketball court or in an alternative setting as long as we were able to continue the narrative. Right. And that it didn't disrupt the things that we're really trying to work on and get across. My last question for you guys, just wrapping things up, I, I, I want to talk about the future of your company, Near and Far <laughs> Projects. Everyone always asks us that question. We're like, we know as well as you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dave and I work really hard at trying to carry things forward all the time and like developing one project into the next and 
we're also acknowledging that we're at this stage of our careers, we could say, and how we have individual things that we want to explore as well, um, whether that's in different countries or in different parts of Canada or with like totally different mediums mm -hmm. of artwork. And I think we've developed a company where we have the space to do that where we have the opportunities to develop our own individual projects while collaborating with one another. Um, in terms of like actual future projects that we have, um, we have a few collaborations coming up. Yeah, big ones actually. We're having our first full-length show February 8th and 9th at the mm. Citadel. Shameless plug. <laughs> yeah. Plug, plug, plug. Plug it! Plug it! <laughs> Um, so come watch it, everyone. <laughs> um, we also have another larger production that is sort of in the works right now for 2020. I think you guys work so well together as a team. We do too, well, actually. Yeah. yeah, it's so funny <laughs> that you guys found each that. other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I always think about this and like, who else would I do it with? Yeah, I and actually. And there's actually no, no one, one else who I think understands each other as well as we do well and that could handle me <laughs> like I'm honestly sure. yeah <laughs> but i think same goes for you you know it's like complimentary towards each other and are able to b bear each other you know and like yeah take a lot from each other which is really which is nice. nice thank you so much for sitting and talking thank, with thank you, you.